Hello, David Sritzky for the Bond Experience. Welcome back. New York City Comic Con. Not quite as big as San Diego Comic Con, but still a massive experience of different comic books, superhero characters, topical movies. It's all there. I'm sure you've heard about it. You don't need to hear me explain about it. But the Bond Experience was invited with a press pass to attend. Now, I have to tell you, um, Sometimes these vlogs don't go according to plan. In fact, very often they don't. Sometimes it's a wonderful accident. Something comes out better. No, not in this case. We had intention of going there with a really fun idea of having the cameraman and I go around the place and, and trying to find James Bond stuff and, and talking to people and mistaking regular costumes for James Bond characters. None of that happened because by the time I got there, a half a million, I'm not exaggerating, a half a million people on Saturday were already there. The place was mobbed. I literally was like this being pushed. Now, um, I can take a crowd or two, but this was like a melee. This was absolutely ridiculous. I was very uncomfortable. I was totally out of my element and it did not work. So let's tell you what we do have. We were able to speak to Dennis Calero. Dennis Calero is an amazing visual artist comic book artist, graphic novel artist. He's also a creative individual, part of a creative team that put together the Casino Royale graphic novel. This is the new one that's out by Dyn um, Dynamite Comics, and it is dynamite. I mean, it's amazing the way he uses shadowing, and it's not, it's not a translation of the movie, it's a translation of the book. So if you ever wanted to see the book in a graphic form, uh, graphic artist form, this is it. And I cannot tell you how cool this is, but also the fact that Dennis was able to make time for us and speak to us at the Bond Experience. So this is an interview with him. I will tell you, we were sitting in the press lounge at a table, it was very noisy. We bumped up the sound as much as possible. You could still hear everything, but you're gonna hear a lot of ambient and, and, and noise, and there were other journalists coming and plunking their stuff on the table. It was a whole big to-do afterwards. Don't ask. But we do want to thank Dennis for this interview. You're going to love it. Make sure you stay for after his interview for a quick little summation, if you will, that I did on the streets with my iPhone. It's very down and dirty gorilla. Might be worth listening to it, though. Anyway, let's take a look. I'm here with a very special guest. Yes, I was looking... Shucks. I was looking Shucks. long and hard for... I got to stop with the innuendos for something James Bondish here, and I ran into Dennis. Dennis Calero, everyone. Hello. Thank you so much for doing oh, this. Oh, my pleasure. Thank you for having me on. Now, uh, we have to introduce yourself officially because there'll be some people that know of you and sure. some people that don't. So what is your claim to fame with James Bond? Uh, I am the illustrator for the uh, Dynamite Entertainment adaptation of Casino Royale and Fleming's Casino Royale. Absolutely. And by the way, if you haven't seen this, what I, what I loved about it was it's the blend. I mean, it's, I'm getting a little bit of fast Spender from Bond in oh, there. Oh, sure. Little bit of Dalton, Carl Michael. I yeah. mean, it's it's a little bit in there. Yeah, so yeah. T tell us a little bit about how did you how did you wind up with this amazing and enviable job? Oh well, yeah, it's it's a uh, it's a dream come true actually. I, I uh, I'm not an artist and I do comics illustration, and I'm not really the guy that's like I gotta draw Batman or I gotta draw Spider Man. Or I'm not happy. I'm kind of like you know give me something challenging and I'm and I'm pay me and I'm happy. But Bond <laughs> was the is the one character. That I had an ambition to draw, and to get to draw him is, is like I feel like I'm I can be done. Uh, I'm not done because I, I have a mortgage, so I'm not done. But <laughs> theoretically, I could be done. Um, basically, I was uh, forgive my voice. Basically, um, uh, I was approached by uh, a man named Mike Lake a number of years ago, who was uh, interested in procuring the rights to Bond, to, and it was his dream to do a series of graphic novels, uh, all based on the original text, set in period. So. Right. Um, for example, Casino Royale was published in uh, 54, 55, right. so yeah. that would be the period of time when we set the book in. Oh my gosh. Um, and that, as many things happen in, it, in all facets of media and entertainment, that didn't actually go through. But years later, uh, Dynamite Entertainment, my friends there, uh, acquired the American license uh, for uh, that, and this idea was revived. 
we were working with another artist that, for whatever reason, wasn't working out. Uh, and then my understanding is that the in Columbia publication guys were like, well, what about this Dennis Calero chap that we, we <laughs> quite liked his samples from a few years ago? And they right. said, well, we, we know that guy. We didn't get that guy. Sure. Uh, so all of a sudden, from a project that was years in the past that, was, that never meant to, was never meant to be, all of a sudden, there I was on my doorstep and I was within a couple of uh, you know, weeks of talking about it, I was drawing it. Unbelievable. So, yeah. How much carte blanche did they give you? And, and obviously, you're... You're a Bond fan, yes. so as a Bond fan, I'm sure you were like yes. a kid in the candy Hard shop. Work. Which direction do I go in? How much leeway did they give you? I mean, they definitely had um, a very specific idea about what they wanted. Right. Um, they wanted something that was very faithful to the book. Um, and as far as I know, uh, Van Jensen, who wrote a terrific script, um, may have excised very little, but we didn't really sort of add anything, sort of tried to represent the, the, the book right. graphically as much as possible. We, we played a little bit in terms of like, in terms of making certain things more visual, like, Absolutely. It, like we were able to make the Baccarat game more visual and we, we used sort of like effects to show like, when Bond is, Bond is explaining, he's not, we're not just showing him literally explaining, but we have a little like graph, a little right. uh, graphic effect showing you know, how cards would be distributed and how the game would run. And we feel like there, there's a way that the graphic novel in a way could be clearer and more precise. Um, but in general, the, the directive was to use the medium of comics to tell as faithful an adaptation as possible. Yeah, and I love the aspect, and I'm sure you do this very consciously, of, of Bond vision. It's almost like getting in well, the Yeah, that was Van's idea, the amazing. idea of like, uh, he walks into a room and boom, boom, boom. And in fact, uh, what, I, what I quite liked about it was um, um, it spoke to his character uh, in some instances. For example, when he sees Vesper for the first time, he doesn't see a whole person. He sees the earrings, he sees the breasts, yes. he sees the, 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 the shoes, he sees all of these things as he's putting together uh, uh, an instant dossier of who she is as a person, but he doesn't see her as a cohesive person right. uh, as he does later in the story. So it was, it was a way of using for me, it was a way of using Bond's personality through the prism of this graphic uh, motif uh, to show an aspect of the way he sees the world um, and to use that to show a, a progression of character as a story. I, I thought that was, a, that was a, Van Jensen did a very nice job with that. It was so well done. And, and I think there was other aspects, even with um, during the game, where you showed parts, like a mouth yeah. or a close-up. And it, it, I felt like I was being pulled in from what I've seen. And then, very interesting use, and this must have been from you, shadow. Yes. Sometimes you just see a hand coming up in a shadow. Right. Uh, tell me about the mood that that creates. Well, you know, that's what's, it's about. It's about mood. Um, it's about not wanting to draw a lot. No. Uh, <laughs> I gotta finish this yeah, up. Yeah, yeah, it's just black and done. Um, I mean, that happens, but for the most part, it's a choice. It's it's, it's the idea of it's the fifties. It's a post-war story, so why not bring a little bit of the uh, the idea of like uh, of, a, of, a, of a noir approach from from that time period taking up like the third man right. dark passage and stuff like that but that to me felt very natural uh they're spy novels but especially the early ones maybe maybe the difference so much in the later ones but the early ones felt very much like more novels with mm. sort of patina of espionage on top right um so we felt that you know this might be the correct approach that's fantastic so or an approach anyway we love the approach. There was a question out there for some of the people that um, have already read this from cover to cover is how much of the movie, if any, have, has influenced any of the art or the movement or the look? Not, nothing really. Okay. Nothing really. The separate um, entity all We started from scratch because the movie, although in spirit, is very much like the novel, I would say the, the Casino Royale the film is closer in spirit to the novel than many of the films. Uh, it's still, uh, you know, veers in wildly different directions right. just because it needs to fill out that time and that space and add more action and, you know, stuff like that. Um, but no, in terms of the storytelling, not at all. If, if, if anything, no, I'm sorry, I have to say no because I, I even... Yeah, this even, is fine. I mean, I, I, I looked at the torture scene yeah. probably clo more closely than anything else. Uh, but at the end of the day, the way that Dan was scripting it from the novel's perspective, it was uh, a wholly different animal. So, no, not at all. Even though I love that film. Yeah, no, it's, and I think this is, I think people like it that it's its own entity. Yeah. So they can enjoy that. It's not a comparison. It's not a novelization of the film, right. for example. Yes, no. Perfect. Um, so, last question, because yes. this is about the future and the vision and everything. So, 
Where do you want to go from here? You've done Casino Royale. Well, What's I'm your going, wish list? I'm going to, uh, let's see. Uh, I mean, another art team's taking over, Live and Let Die. Okay. And, uh, and, and bon chance to them. Uh, if I was ever brought back, I would love to do Your Honor Majesty or From Russian Love. Oh my gosh, I mean, absolutely. That'd be a joy. Um, but if not, you know, I'm writing my own stuff uh, and um, I'm actually writing and directing a documentary and I'm doing different things. I'm doing a wonderful project now with humanoids, which is the opposite of Bond. It's a, it's a, it's a noir, it's a neo noir set in Texas in 1976. So it's like a very dissolved heat and bright light and sweat yeah. and grit and dirt. And there's murders and it's, it's terrific. And that'll be, that's called Big Country. That'll be coming out sometime in 2019. Uh, so there's, there's dark, dark passages on the horizon. So right. it'll be fun. That's fantastic. Yeah. Thank you so much for your time, my, Dennis. My pleasure. It's been David Zeritsky for the Bond Experience. And we'll See you very soon. Take care. Well, ladies and gentlemen, um, I'm in New York City right now, and I just got done with New York City Comic Con. Had a wonderful interview with a um, surprise James Bond celebrity. So we'll bring that to you very soon. But I'll tell you, I looked high and low for James Bond stuff. I couldn't find a thing. There literally is no evidence of James Bond at Comic Con, which is a little disappointing. You would think there'd be some sort of image or something like that, something subtle, and there's just nothing to be found. So, um, yeah, I'm gonna leave. I mean, if there was something, some sort of sign that said Bond is back, you know, just some aspect of it, that time's not flying, I, I would stay, but I'm gonna go because there's nothing. So, it's been David Zeritsky from Comic Con. You'll see the vlogs very soon, and we'll talk to you soon. Take care. Oh, hey, you're still here. I didn't even know. Uh, you listen, while you're here, uh, if you want, I, I, so I would actually go to this button right here and click on it because then you actually subscribe to our vlogs. It's amazing. Um, you get to see all the upcoming stuff first. You get notifications. It screams at you while you're at work. It's absolutely amazing. Just click on this button, hit subscribe. Just move your cursor, move.